This video is one of five quick reviews of the feature films from Series 1 of the Final Girl board game, which are designed to supplement our main review of the game. We hope these will collectively form a useful guide of the settings of villains available in the series, whether you are deciding where to start your experience of Final Girl or looking to take on a new challenge. You will require a copy of the core game in order to play this or any other feature film. For the sake of brevity, unless otherwise stated, the views I expressed in our main review remain relevant for the feature films and won't necessarily be repeated in this video. Lastly, please note that this video inevitably spoils some aspects of the feature film, otherwise there's not much to talk about. We have restricted discussion of possible tactics to help you defeat this feature film to its own section, so you can skip this if you don't want any help figuring out this puzzle for yourself. However, I will comment on the overall features of the scenario throughout the video. The other videos in the series will be linked in the description below as they are published. Thanks for watching. Like all the feature films, Happy Trails Horror is divided into two sections. Those elements that are linked to the setting, such as the setup, events, tokens and item cards, and those items that are related to the killer. This is so that you can easily switch the killer or settings with others in the range, and the components are marked with symbols allowing you to track them back to the setting or the killer at the end of your game. These components are enclosed within the map board for Camp Happy Trails and Hans's Killer Board. You also get two final girls, Laurie and Rico in this case, which again can be used in any setting. For the purpose of this review, we're going to look at these components as they are used together without switching in other components from the wider final girl range, as there are so many potential combinations at this stage that it would make for a very long video. No plastic miniatures are included in the feature film, though these are available separately. Hans is a straightforward killer operating via the core rules of the game without the addition of any extra special rules that are common among the other killers in the series. This makes him easy to slot into your games, but does nothing to diminish his effectiveness at spoiling your day. With 12 health points, Hans can take more hits than any other killer in Series 1 and has plenty of opportunities to heal damage he sustains. With the full half of his terror cards capable of increasing the horror level, and the bonuses on his terror track designed to do the same, Hans will work to reduce your final girl's effectiveness in taking actions, whilst also being capable of delivering significant damage in combat. In gameplay, Hans feels like a classic slasher horror movie villain. When you face him for the first time, he'll seem slow, even contemplative to begin with, but Hans is simply biding his time until his bloodlust is charged and his finale card is active, at which point Hans is a brutal, almost unstoppable beast. You really feel the narrative of this character, stalking his way around the camp, dispatching those teenagers too foolish to realise they should have started running an hour ago, until only your final girl is left. It's a great example of game design conveying narrative that I thoroughly enjoyed. Like Hans, Camp Happy Trails adds no special rules to the core game, making it the easiest to step into in Series 1. The top-down map is dominated by the almost empty lake area in the middle, around which most of the locations are positioned. This turns the map into a large wheel with most locations on or easily accessible from the path around the lake. The only exception is Makeout Point, which acts as something of a dead end and is a less than ideal location for victims to spawn. Camp Happy Trails feels less determined to ensure your doom than some of the other locations in Series 1, with the terror cards and events it contributes to the game seemingly less brutal and some are even positive. There is a subtle emphasis on the generation of additional victims or increasing the bloodlust generated by kills that will situationally favour Hans and other killers like him that really need to generate bloodlust in order to reach their full potential. But some of these cards are just as likely to assist you in unlocking the ultimate power of your final girl more quickly. The setup cards, meanwhile, provide a nice balance of scenarios, varying between victims clustered versus spread out and victims close to the killer versus further away at the start. The item cards provide a generous variety of options depending on what you can pick up from search locations. Highlights include the bear trap, which swaps the distraction tactics of several other similar items in the game for outright damage to the killer if you can persuade them to step in just the right space, as well as the whistle providing a risk-reward crowd control option as well as a decent passive effect. 
Overall, it's a location with plenty of replayability and surprises, but one that won't make you feel like you're up against two killers at once. Nori has one of the best damage potentials in the game, as her ultimate ability adds additional damage to her attacks. Load her up with the right action cards, a suitable item and enough dice, and she can be a real danger to the Butcher despite the ease with which he delivers damage himself. However, with only 5 points of health, there is a risk of her becoming a glass cannon, especially when faced with multiple attacks in the same turn. You will also need to rescue 6 victims before her power becomes available, which is likely to represent a significant feat against some killers. Lori feels very well suited as a foil for Hans, but we speculate that she may have a greater challenge against some of the other killers available in the series, particularly those less susceptible to damage or able to inflict multiple attacks consistently. With an extra point of health and one less victim to activate her ultimate ability, Rico has some advantages over Lori but gains very different benefits from saved victims. The ability to get a planning action card for free is a nice opportunity to use a card I don't often feel I can afford. However, her ultimate ability will require considerably more finesse in order to use it to its best advantage. The ability allows her to move into the space of a killer for free, provided they are relatively close, which creates the possibility of some quick ambush attacks, delivering damage to the killer and then dashing away using normal movement to leave the killer's space before they hit back. It's great in theory, but once Han's movement has been increased by Bloodlust, it does become a much riskier option, and I'm not sure how well it would play out against some of the other killers in the range, which move much more quickly. With the exception of Han's, I usually find that killers come to me quite quickly enough, thank you very much. We appreciate that part of the joy of these games is figuring out the puzzle, and if you want to avoid any advice for defeating Han's, this is your last chance to skip to the next chapter. If you're still here, this section won't replace your skill and decision making, but may give you some idea where to start if you're struggling to defeat the Butcher. Hans is a powerful killer, but his movement represents a key strategic weakness. His basic attack each turn does not provide him with any movement, as several of his terror cards don't move him or move him without attacking. When he does move in the early stages of the game, he will only travel a single space. This means that on average dice rolls, you have the potential to be hilariously faster than him. If you can save the victims around him quickly, perhaps activating movement bonuses doing so to further speed up this process, you may be able to clear the board even before his dark power is activated. If you pay attention to your distance from Hans and use the circular happy trails board to your advantage, you should be able to clean the board of victims before he gets his hands on too many, after which I recommend you play the Benny Hill theme as Hans ineffectually tries to catch up with you while you search for items and prepare your attack. This strategy relies on your awareness of Hans' range and managing the cards in your hand that enable movement accordingly. Hans does have some teleportation style surprises in his terror deck, but these are less brutal than those of many other killers, and provided you keep a guard card handy, they shouldn't hold you up for very long. This strategy should deny Hans too much horror from his board, but he can still generate this through terror cards and, as with all the killers, keeping this under control so that you roll at least two dice and your actions remain reasonably reliable is crucial. Overall, I agree with those who have suggested that the Happy Trails Horror is a good place to start your enjoyment of the final girl game. It allows you to focus on the core rules in a slightly more forgiving setting, and whilst not without its challenges, this feature film feels like a notable step down in difficulty compared to the others in the series. No disrespect intended towards anyone still struggling with Hans, we all find different puzzles more or less challenging after all, but I found that once I had defeated Hans, I could do so with reasonable consistency. In most other feature films, I felt I needed a little duck to win, in Camp Happy Trails, the smallest run of luck made me feel like I was outright cheating. This deficit of difficulty compared to the other feature films is probably the biggest negative of picking up Happy Trails Horror. If you've already defeated other films in the series, there may not be much of a challenge here for you, and even for new players, I don't think there is anything wrong with starting with the scenario that gives you a more representative experience of the game. It's a great opportunity to really cement the core rules in your mind and get a first win on the board, but I suspect most players will be left hungry for a more meaty challenge once they have defeated the Butcher. I hope this video has helped you decide whether Happy Trails Horror is a feature film you want to add to your Final Girl collection. As always, let us know in the comments if you agree with my conclusions or have had a different experience of this film. Reviews of the other feature films in the series are coming soon or will be linked in the description below. 
then why not subscribe to ensure you don't miss any of our Final Girl content. I can't understate how much it helps us. We'll be back as soon as we've cleaned up all the mess Hans has made in our studio. Until then, remember to work hard, play better and take care of that.